my friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner-related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. Today is going to be my wrap-up for the month of August. We're going to do a sit-down video today because I read a lot of books in August. I was a host for the Purple Team for the amazing readathon that was put together by Bree at Four Paws and a Book, who I will link down below. Uh, I ended up reading 22 books in August for a total of 7,138 pages. It was my highest book count for the year and my highest page count for the year. My average rating was 3.34 for the month. Our other stats that we go through, um, length, there were 18 novels, one short story collection, one short story, and two graphic novels. Genre-wise, I read four contemporary, five horror, four fantasy, five paranormal, one romance, one mystery, one sci-fi, and one mixed collection. Age range-wise, I read seven mid-grades, five YA, and ten adult. We are going to go through the books that I read. Um, we'll start with rereads and then go to the lowest rated and work our way up to the highest rated with one exception. Um, the book that I rated the highest of the month was just a short story, so it will be lumped with the other books that it's part of the series for. We're going to start with my reread, which was Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. Um, you're here on the booktube, you know what Heartstopper is about. Book 2 is Nick and Charlie getting together. It's absolutely adorable. It's very queer, very cute. Um, just reminds me of high school in like all of the best ways. Uh, also in some of the bad ways, but mostly just in all of the best ways. I also had three DNFs for the month. Um, my DNFs were very goblin mode. So in order to count a book for the readathon, you had to read at least 50%. And all three of the books that I read, I did not want to read 50% of, but I did. I stopped at exactly 50% on all three books, and some of them I stopped mid-sentence and just closed the book and walked away. So, so we're first going to talk about the one that I actually have a physical copy of, and that is Jade Fire Gold by June C.L. Tan. I got this as a, I think this was an owl crate maybe? It's sprayed edges, so it's a special edition. I read this as part of a tri chapter earlier in the year, or earlier, later last year, one of the two. And I did like the first chapter, I kept it. I went ahead and started reading, and I did not love this. I was not a fan of our characters. I felt like they were very, just like very generic YA characters that I didn't really love, and I didn't really care about what happened to them or the people around them or the world around them and I knew that I could finish this but had I finished it I probably would have given it a low rating and so I decided to DNF rather than to read a book that I know that I'm not going to rate well. So I prefer on something like this to not read it and to let the people who do enjoy these kind of reads be able to find them uh, by not giving them a low rating. Reading through to the 50% mark I did find it to be very predictable and I did read through um, some spoilers and like a group book discussion that explained like the plot through the end of the book just to kind of I've said it before sometimes I will read through either like a full um, overview or a synopsis or a spoiler section of a book that I'm just not sure on because I will I mean I read the same book over and over again it doesn't bother me if I know how things end so I read through basically the ending of the story and I was very happy to put this down and not continue reading it. I also DNF'd Black Swan by Mercedes Lackey which was weird for me because I've read two different trilogies by Mercedes Lackey before um, the Hunter trilogy and the Arrows of the Queen or is it just the Arrows trilogy? I think it's just the Arrows trilogy. Either way, I've read two different trilogies from this author before and really enjoyed them, but this book was not it in any way, shape, or form. I, again, was having a horrible time, read through some reviews. It, this book is fairly low rated. Um, I picked it up based off of needing to have a prompt of a retelling of like a classic tale. One thing I take a major issue with is the hero of the story, the love interest, if you will, 
um, sexually assaults a woman at some point during the story and we're supposed to find him redeemable after that and I don't feel like that's possible um, with the narrative that we're given. Um, because I didn't read the whole thing I just kind of read through some other reviews and some other um, synopses and like wrap-ups of the story itself. I do highly recommend if you're interested in looking into this book which I don't recommend you do but if you are interested in looking into the book that you would read through some of the lower rated reviews that go through um, the full span of what your content warnings would be for this book because it does have a few and it just was really not the book for me. And the last book that I DNF'd for the month was Scout's Honor by Lily Anderson. Again, this is an author who I have read from in the past and really loved her stories. Um, I've also unhauled one because I didn't like the very beginning of. This one I would have DNF'd in the first 50 pages had it not been for the readathon. I continued reading it hoping that it would get better and it really didn't. Scout's Honor is set in a world where uh, they're like, they're like girl guides or girl scouts if you will, but they are like, you know, presumably they like sell cookies and like have tea parties and all these things, but they actually fight monsters. The main character, her friend died in a monster attack and she has not been part of the scouts since then uh, because her of her PTSD, which valid. Her mom tries to pull her back in and like wants her to coach these other girls. And it's like, none of the characters were very good. Um, they again were just very boring and bland and I didn't really care about what happened to any of them and I just was not having a good time. I didn't like the world building. I didn't like the world we were in. I was not having a good time with the story and so I decided to DNF it. Um, again I would have DNF'd at 50 pages but ended up reading to 50% so that I could count my pages towards the readathon. And because <laughs> we're gonna keep talking about books that I really did not like, uh, the next book is rated a two star out of five, and that is Jaws by Peter Benchley. No, uh, I have a full video for this. It was our OffTube chat book club pick for the month of August. So Kate and I both read it and watched the movie. And honestly, if you have any interest in Jaws whatsoever, just watch the movie, don't read the book. The book is very sexist, homophobic, racist. It's utter garbage. It's basically the plotline of the movie except not. It's like the movie is, I'm sure most of you have seen Jaws, you know, it's a small town. Um, there's a shark in the water. The shark is killing people. Um, they try to shut down the beaches, but the mayor doesn't want to shut down the beaches because this small town is reliant upon the rich white people that come in and spend all their money there during the summer. And so the cop and this shark specialist guy and a sailing specialist guy go out onto the ocean and they hunt down this killer shark. They're gonna need a bigger boat. Okay the book is very similar to that. At 9% I had written some notes basically saying that um, one of the very first things that I read in this book was um, the main character talking about how if the rich white people don't come to town it's going to be very hard for the people in the town especially the black people because black people can't hold good jobs so no one's going to want to hire them when they could hire a white person instead. A choice. Um, they also discuss um, and kind of like are making fun of the fact that there was a rapist in the town the year prior and they were referring to them as like molestations because they were the perpetrator was a black man and none of the rich white people would come there if they thought that there was a black rapist running around town. The main character's wife is in his age bracket but she was one of the rich white people who came to town and then fell in love with him who was a uh, basically a townie and she is very regretful of that. She wishes that she was still like in her country clubs playing tennis living the high life and she's like I just married this guy and because I loved him and now I'm stuck here in this world that I don't enjoy. When the shark specialist guy comes to town to like help them fight with this shark she finds out that he is actually the younger brother of a guy that she used to date like a 10 years younger brother of a guy that she used to date when she was a teenager and they end up having an affair. Why? I'm, t I'm telling you spoilers but honestly I don't even care. So they have an affair but they like are meeting in this restaurant out outside of town and it's like dark and like they're 
they don't want anybody to see them, obviously, because, you know, it's a small town, everybody knows everybody, and she doesn't want everyone to know that she's stepping out on her husband, because her husband is the sheriff of the town, and they're, like, sitting there at this table, and she's, like, they're, they're talking about fantasies and things that they look for, you know, um, what their fantasies were, things they look for in a partner, etc. And she's like, oh, I had this same schoolgirl fantasy that all girls had. I wanted to grow up to be a prostitute. I don't know about you, but I don't know a single girl when we were in grade school who was like, I want to grow up to be a sex worker. No, no one said that. No one said that. I, I don't know a single girl on this earth who has like an eight-year-old wants to grow up to be a sex worker. In fact, I feel like if you are an eight-year-old and you know what a sex worker is, you're probably gonna need a lot of therapy uh, when you're an adult. This woman probably could have used some. Um, and so when, you know, she's like, you know, same fantasy all girls have, I wanna grow up to be a prostitute. And so then he's like, oh, so you must like things, like what's your thing? And she goes, oh, um, just the usual, like I, I fantasize about being raped. I mean, everybody's got their kinks, sure. Um, not for me. Also, then he's like, well, explain it to me. What would happen in this scenario? And so um, she's explaining to him the scenario of like how the guy would break in and how he would tie her up and all that. Like she's going through details of like what would happen. And he's like, tell me what he looks like. Is he black? I don't know what the fuck is wrong with Peter Benchley. But he needs therapy. Whatever it is. He needs a lot of therapy. I'm sorry. People say like, oh, it's a product of its time. It was the 70s. It is a piece of shit. It was a piece of shit in the 70s. It's a piece of shit now. If you watch through the commentary from the director, um, Steven Spielberg and Carl... I'll never remember Carl's last name. He's the one who ended up being like the final script writer. Uh, but Peter eventually wrote the first script and um, Steven Spielberg and Carl got together and were like, we're rewriting this thing because it was utter garbage. Um, and they made a really great movie out of an absolutely shitty piece of work book. So anyway, don't read Jaws. You don't need to. Just move on with your life. Watch the movie. Get a bigger boat. Um, the other book that I read this month. I guess I gave it a 2.5. I thought I gave it a 2. My notes say, honestly, without my rating system, I would have given this a 1 star. And that is Blubber by Judy Bloom. My note says, I never wanted to simultaneously punch both children and adults at the same time. And also, I don't know how anyone read this book and was like, oh my god, this is a great children's book. Because again, utter garbage. If you have fond memories of this from when you were a child, I highly recommend reading it again. Don't recommend it to other people to read until you've read it again. Because it's garbage. Okay. Basically, this book is about a girl, I can't even remember what the main character's name is. Linda? No, Jill. The main character's name is Jill. Blubber's name is Linda. Jill, our main character, is a bully. Plain and simple. She works with the other girls to pick on Linda. They call her Blubber. They make fun of her. They um, pull her skirt up so that all the boys can see her underwear. Um, they do horrible, horrible things to this child. Um, brought back a lot of childhood trauma for me, honestly. And then at some point, Jill does something that the other kids don't like. And so the mean girls take Linda under their wing and are like, actually, we like Linda now. We don't like you, Jill. You're horrible. And so they start doing all the things to Jill that they had previously been doing to Linda. And Linda also doing these things to Jill. And Jill's like, well, I'm better at being bullied than Linda is. So she just like brushes it off because she's a better at being bullied. The fact that Jill was still referring to Linda as blubber after the other girls started picking on Jill and treating her like shit means that she learned absolutely fucking nothing from the fact that the other kids were bullying her. This book was honestly 80% Jill and the other mean girls picking on Linda. I mean, they locked her in a closet for God's sake. They forced her to eat food that she didn't want to eat until she threw up. Horrible, 
horrible fucking children. And then they started picking on Jill. And Jill's like, I'm good at being bullied and um, you guys can't bully me. Um, but also that blubber girl, uh, it's all her fault. It's all her fault that nobody likes me anymore. And then suddenly she gets a new best friend. I don't fucking know. It was dumb. It was stupid. I hated it. It's garbage. Okay, moving on. At 2.75 out of 5 stars we have In Nightfall by Suzanne Young. This book was sold to me as a Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets the Lost Boys. Gender bent. Um, this is just the Lost Boys scene for scene, basically. If you liked the Lost Boys, or if you've seen the Lost Boys, uh, the movie with Kiefer Sutherland, you don't need to read this because you've already seen it. You already know what happens. The villain is the villain. The bad guys are the bad guys. And everything that happens in the movie happens in the book, except for the saxophone man. I could have used a little more saxophone man in this, honestly. Um, if you have never seen The Lost Boys, then you could probably read this and enjoy it and have a good time. But for me, because it was essentially just The Lost Boys word for word, okay, it wasn't that close. But I mean, seriously, like, two kids are in trouble, they have to go to their grandma's house, they um, run into this super attractive girl who the brother falls for and the other brother has to save him, except it's a sister in this one. It's a brother and a sister, but my point is, it's like scene for scene the same. This would have gotten a lower rating, but I love the grandmother in this and there is actually a backstory for the vampires and the reason why there are vampires in Nightfall, um, which is not something that you get in The Lost Boys. And I really liked the backstory of this and I really liked uh, the sibling relationship between our two main characters, uh, the main character and her brother. I, I think that they were great characters together. Um, but yeah, if I had, if I had never seen the Lost Boys, I probably would have liked this better because I wouldn't have known who the villain was from the second they hit the page because you know that they're going to be the villain the second they hit the page because that's who the villain was in the movie. And it, even if, if they had changed who the main villain was, it would have been better. But it's literally just the Lost Boys and I just... I, and then at three stars, I have Kindred Spirits, which is book eight in the Sarah Normal series. Um, I can't really tell you what this book is about, but the Sarah Normal series, as I have talked about at length on my channel, is a mid-grade series uh, by Phoebe Rivers, who is just actually a group of different authors who have written um, these books in this series. And it follows Sarah, who can see ghosts, and also throughout the series she starts to gain other powers, and she lives in a house with her father and a older lady who is a, um, a psychic, and the older lady helps her figure out her powers and what it means for her. Then at 3.25 out of 5 stars, I have Voices in the Snow by Darcy Coates. I liked our main character and the love interest in this. I think they were really good characters and I liked the setting and like the feel of the story itself and the monsters were creepy. Honestly, uh, I read this entire book um, on a seven hour drive back from Pennsylvania where I was visiting with Julian Amber and I had some kind of like a stomach virus and basically I had like the worst stomach cramps I've ever had in my life. Um, I actually ended up having to pull over on the side of the highway to throw up a couple times. Um, I was out for about three days after I was able to make it home. Um, so I think part of the reason why I didn't really enjoy this story is because I read it in a very miserable time. So I do plan to read the next two books in the series or the next three books in the series. I think there are three more out right now. Uh, but it is a set in a time where we don't really know what's going on, but our main character is headed to her aunt's house to pick her up. There's some kind of like a big snowstorm coming and they're trying to go to her sister's house who has a bunker, but she's picking up her aunt on the way there. Uh, instead, her, her car wrecks and she wakes up in this house with a strange guy that she doesn't know. And there is something outside and it's trying to get in. It was a very, like, it was a decent book. I do tend to like Darcy's haunted house stories better than um, her more science fiction or, um, like, the more, I like, I like the haunted houses more than the real person killers. Let's go with that. That's what we're going to go with. Uh, but again, with this one, I definitely think that it was 
probably more just me being miserable when I read it. But I mean, I rated it what I rated it. So moving on. At a 3.5 out of 5 stars, we have The Frugal Wizard's Handbook to Surviving Medieval England by Brandon Sanderson. I, again, liked this. I thought it was very funny. I liked the humor. I liked the sci-fi aspect of it and the world building part of it. Uh, if you are not familiar with the story, it follows our main character who doesn't know who he is. He wakes up in the middle of what he assumes is like a renaissance fair. He doesn't remember his name or where he came from or how he got there or any really anything about himself. Uh, but as he moves through, he starts to find these pieces of this handbook and it turns out that he's in medieval England and he's trying to figure out how to survive there, how he got there, who he is, um, and all of that thing. So you, throughout the story, learn bits and pieces about him and who he is. Um, he is very funny. He rates things like, um, at the very beginning, he's trying to hide from people. So he's hiding behind a tree and he gives the tree like a four out of five stars. And it's like very great hiding place, has a nice soft spot to sit, would hide here again. Um, I thought they were very, I thought it was very humorous, uh, but it definitely wasn't like normal Sanderson. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't what I'm used to from Sanderson having only read from the Cosmere and Steelheart, but, or I mean the entire series, the Reckoners series, that's what it's called, but it was good, but not my favorite, you know? We're going to go ahead and talk about a series now. Um, I read the first two books and a novella in the Parasol Protectorate series. So Changeless is book two and it was a 3.5 and Soulless, which is book one, which I don't have my physical copy of yet. Um, it is on the way, but it's coming from England. Um, Soulless was a 4.25 out of five stars. And then Meat Cute, which is basically the meat cute of our two main characters, uh, it's actually just like a short story. It's only a few pages. It's not really that long. I gave that a five star. This series follows Alexia Terabati, who is a soulless, which is essentially in this world where there are paranormal creatures like vampires, werewolves, and ghosts. Uh, if Alexia touches a werewolf or a vampire, she takes away their abilities while she's touching them and they basically become human while she has a hold of them. And the first book is her... Um, first off, getting with a very sexy werewolf, and I am here for it. He's Scottish. I am all over it. It was a fantastic time. But also trying to figure out um, some mysteries of things that are going on in the world. It's very steampunk. It is uh, Victorian era. It is um, a really good paranormal romance. So if you like those kinds of things, you may like the series. It is adult. It is sexy. I always thought these were YA books um, just based off of the covers, uh, but no, they not. So having a fantastic time with these. Also at 3.5 out of 5 stars is Witch Volume 14? Volume 14. Um, this is a graphic novel series that I've been reading for the past few years. I typically just buy, um, so what this is, is it's Part 5, The Book of Elements, Volume 2, but it's Volume 14 got a lot of numbers. So basically what I do is every time I finish a part, I just buy all of whatever's in the next part. Most parts are between four, three to four volumes. Um, so I have, I just buy them by parts. So I've bought all of part five. This is the second volume in part five. There are two more volumes in part five. Um, but I have been enjoying these. There was a TV series of these when I was a teenager. I was probably way too old to be watching it, honestly, but who cares? I'm also way too old to be reading these, but also who cares? Uh, these follow five friends who are granted magic powers to help protect their world from a supernatural world that lives on the other side of the veil and they protect people and help people and this is just like their everyday lives and their friendships and dealing with the other side of the world and all of those fun things and it's a really good series that I enjoyed. Next at a four out of five stars I have The Narrow by Kate Alice Marshall. Um, once again this month uh, I mean is a four star so like this is a fantastic read. But normally when I read K. Alice Marshall, I am screaming from the rafters about this. And this one is definitely not a burnout problem because I read this as one of the first couple of books of the month. So like some of the ones at the end of the month, I'm like, maybe I'm just burnt out. But no, the narrow I read at the beginning of the month, but it just didn't have that feel for me that the other books that she writes does. It wasn't 
spooky really. It didn't have the spook factor that I was looking for. There was a twisty part that made things more creepy but I don't feel like it was like super creepy like some of her other works. I did like the characters but I don't feel like we got to know enough about the main character's friend group. I would have liked to have gotten to know more about those people instead of just the main character and our secondary carrier. Secondary or carrier? Secondary character. Yeah let's go with that. I also had a really hard time with the romance in this because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to feel, in my opinion, I feel like it's supposed to feel like this great all-consuming love story and I just didn't get it. Like I just didn't, I didn't feel it, I didn't get it, it wasn't working for me and so like overall I wanted more from the story and I wanted it to be this bigger thing than what it was but I also liked it but also I was disappointed. I don't know how to make sense of this other than to say like if you are a Kate Alice Marshall fan you will probably enjoy this. Uh, if you like spooky YA you will probably enjoy this. I enjoyed it. It just wasn't like a favorite of all time. You know because it's a four star. Four star is great but I don't know. I don't know how to say like this book was fantastic but also I didn't have the best time. I know it's weird okay it's, I, I get it. Also at a four star we have The House Next Door and this is Creepover book 16? 16. 16. Uh, these are by PJ Knight again multiple authors writing under the pseudonym PJ Knight for Simon Spotlight. These books all take place uh, as like a sleepover that's creepy and in this one in particular these three sisters are having a party on New Year's Eve and across the yard from them there's this old spooky house that has been there for the entire time their family has lived there. The entire town all they ever want to talk about is this house and how it's haunted and like all the creepy things that have happened there. The girls don't believe that anything creepy actually happens there. During their party on New Year's Eve they start to see things happening at the house so they decide to go and investigate and weird shit happens. This one was actually pretty creepy. Um, this is a four on the creepometer that's on the back of the book um, and typically with these books whatever the creepometer is it goes one through five but typically whatever it is on that's what I rate it. Uh, this was a four creepy and I rated it a four star. This was not true for one of the ones I read last month but this one was very spooky and I liked it. The next four star was The Nameless Switch by Natalie C. Parker. This is the second book in the series. The first book was The Devouring Wolf which I read last year I think either during the Summer Scare Readathon or um, the 31 books of October. I think this was a really great second novel. I think it did everything that I wanted it to do. The Devouring Wolf takes place in a world where uh, werewolves exist and every, I think it's like the three new moons of summer, their magic has been set so that those are the only three times that new werewolves will change. Um, you can, most werewolves are born, they're born from parents who are werewolves and so for those you have three summers I think that you have time to change and our main character it is her final um, time that she could possibly change into a werewolf not everyone does and she does not change and neither do four other of her friends and so these five girls are put together to try to figure out um, why this is happening to them because they feel like it shouldn't have happened to them and um, it turns out that there is some evil afoot. I think the story is very diverse. Um, it has a very diverse cast of main characters. It is a great mid-grade. It has like all of the good like themes that you want a mid-grade story to have about belonging and having like believing in yourself and all of those things. I really enjoyed the first book and the second book was great as well. Uh, we're not really going to talk about this one because it's just a collection of short stories but I also read Shoot Down the Windy Bird by Julie Zentopoulos and I gave this a four star. So my next four star is Dark Corners by Megan Golden. This is the follow-up to The Night Swim so it follows the same main character Rachel. Rachel is asked to join a group of police officers in Florida over a case. She goes there. It's because some guy in jail has asked to see her. They send her in. They think that he's going to give information about a girl that's gone missing and then uh, he doesn't and then Rachel starts to like try to investigate on her own and figure out where this girl is that's gone missing. It has to do with a convention of influencers from like Instagram. Um, I don't think it's called Instagram. I think it's called something else in the story but it's Instagram. It might be TikTok. I don't know. Either way. 
uh, but there's an influencer conference. This girl that went missing is an influencer. Um, and honestly, I really liked this. I liked the story. I like the main characters. I do like Rachel. I like her love interest, but I do feel like the romance was kind of like shoehorned into the story at some point. I think that they are a good match for each other and I think that they make sense together, but they just, it was kind of woven in a little weird. It was like, it was almost like she wrote a story and then they were like, but can you put a romance in it too? And so she had to like figure out how to put the romance in it too, you know? The thing I like about this book and The Night Swim is that Rachel's goal is to um, talk about the victims of the story rather than just the perpetrator. And so as someone who likes to read these stories, and like to learn about the victims. And I feel like that's one of the best ways to keep the victim's memory alive. And I think we should focus more on victims than on the perpetrators. Um, I do appreciate that that is in here. I also appreciate the fact that while it was very minusculely stated, it was discussed a little bit how um, women who are um, black indigenous people of color are typically not given the attention that blonde haired blue eyed white women are given when they go missing. Um, it wasn't a large part of the story but it was mentioned and I do appreciate that it was at least in there and acknowledged that that is a real thing in our world. I also appreciate the perspective of the villain. I always love like a perpetrator's point of view not because I like the perpetrator but because I like trying to figure out how people's brains work and so seeing inside the mind of the perpetrator um, is interesting to me. So I really enjoyed this. It was a good time. Um, I had a fun time with this one. I also read this one directly after Jaws. So in comparison, <laughs> This should be like a 30 star book. At a 4.25 out of 5 stars, I have This Poison Heart by Caitlin Bayron. Uh, this is, I think I got this a special edition. I think it is. Like, I don't even remember what book box I got this out of. Here she is. I have not obviously been putting this one off for a couple of years. And I really enjoyed this. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I did read the first chapter of this as part of a try a chapter again either earlier this year or late last year and I had a really good time with the story. It follows our main character Briseis. Uh, she has two moms and she knows that she was adopted and she has this power to um, kind of like make plants grow and they live in New York City and I know it says what specific place she lives in New York City because just saying New York City is like saying that they live in the United States. It's a giant ass place. Uh, but there's not a lot of plant life around and anytime she spends too much time around plants they tend to act weird. And this lawyer shows up at their house and is like, hey, um, you know, we know that your birth mom died when you were younger but your her sister, your aunt, has also uh, been declared dead. And so she left this will that has you as the beneficiary of it and there is this estate that you've inherited and we would really like for you to come and check it out and like all of these you know all of these lawyery things and so Briseis and her mothers decide that they are going to go to this estate um it is out in the middle of nowhere there's a lot of plant life around so they're kind of curious as to how Briseis is going to act in this place um, but she gets there and she starts to learn more about her family and um, just kind of like the weird things that are going on and weird things that are happening and she gets a love interest who is fantastic and I really had a good time with the story. I again enjoyed it more than I thought I would especially as like this YA where like this kind of thing has been very big over the last couple of years and a lot of them I have not enjoyed quite so much but I did really like this one. Um, for me the villain was pretty obvious uh, who the villain was and so that could have been a little more enjoyable but there is a cliffhanger ending at this that like some crazy shit happens at the end of this book and I am so excited. Um, if you like Greek mythology this has a good bit of Greek mythology in it. It does deal with like um, f familial relationships, generational relationships, um, just a lot of really interesting things in this book. I actually um, read this book and then I purchased the second book because I'm very excited to get to that very soon. Next at a 4.5 out of 5 stars we have Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. This book follows our main character who is a young girl I believe around age 12 from Syria and she lives with her mother and her father and her older brother whom she loves very very much and is very close with is trying to fight against the rebels and is really standing up and trying to protect people in 
their community. She finds out that her mother is pregnant and because it's not a very safe place for a pregnant woman or really anyone to be, her father sends her mother and herself to America to live with her mother's brother and his family. So um, she goes to America where she does have some knowledge of the English language but is not really familiar with the world culturally. This book deals with war, Islamophobia, racism, um, a lot of other heavy topics. It's a very heavy story but at its heart it's really about a young girl growing into being a young woman and what that means for her and how she's doing that outside of a society that she is used to. Um, I cried a lot during this book. I did do a vlog for this, um, for this book, Soulless, and also Every Gift a Curse, which we have not yet talked about. Um, they were my, I did a Purple Host Favorites video for um, the Amazing Readathon. So that video should theoretically be up by now, but I don't know what order things are going up in. But yes, if you want to watch me cry over this book and talk about it at length, um, you can check it out there. It was a very good read. It's a mid-grade. Um, I think if you have someone in you, you know, someone that you love, whether it's your child or a niece or a nephew or what have you that's in that age bracket, I think this is a good story for them to read to kind of give them some empathy for other people in the world. The next book that I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars to was Talk Flirty to Me by Libby Hart. Um, this was again better than I had expected. One thing I do want to mention that is not clear from the synopsis of this is that this is a second chance romance. I know some people are very particular about their tropes when it comes to romance. This is a second chance romance. However, the main characters dated when they were in their teens and in high school and I think they had they had their breakup wasn't really anybody was in the wrong. Um, their breakup was more just of like a growing apart kind of thing and this is set I believe like seven to ten years in the future so there's like no real there was no nothing in the past that is you really have to redeem either character from you know what I mean like yes they have to grow because that's the whole point of books and characters is to grow but there's nothing like that one of them has to redeem themselves from in the past for the second chance romance to happen. But again, I know people are very particular about their romance tropes, so I want to make that clear from the beginning. Our main character, Piper, is an audiobook narrator, and she is looking to get this job, but it requires two people to do the job. So it's both a male and female voice, and her brother's best friend, Sam, who she used to date in high school, is like, I'll do it with you. Um, naturally it's a smutty romance book and things kind of just heat up from there. It deals with a large cast of family characters which I love in any book. Anytime there's like a huge family especially with a badass Italian nonna I love those. I think that there are so many siblings but it's not really important to like keep track of which sibling is which like it's not important to the story to know like the life story of all of these different siblings it's just they're there and they're fun and they add layers to the story and I the spicy scenes they were spicy and it was very like heartwarming heartfelt I really really enjoyed this story I think it was fantastic if you like second chance romance if you like um any kind of like large family setting read it okay at a 4.75 out of 5 stars we have Hummingbird by Natalie Lloyd. Again another middle grade that I absolutely loved. It made me cry. I sobbed. It has all of the things that I look for in a really good mid grade when I'm not looking for a mid grade spooky. Uh, it was whimsy. It was all about finding yourself. It was a little bit magical and it had disability rep. Our main character has and um, it's actually discussed what the actual check technical terminology is but essentially she has a bit brittle bone syndrome and so she lives most of her life in a wheelchair just to keep her from falling and breaking bones. She lives in a house with her mother, her stepfather, and her stepbrother and she is homeschooled and she is talking to her parents and she's like yo I want to go to school and be like a normal kid and they finally agree to let her go to school and while she's there she decides that she wants to be in a school play and she hears this story about a hummingbird and this hummingbird comes to this town every so many years and 
one person is able to find it and the bird grants them a wish. And so she teams up with another girl from the play and also her stepbrother and they kind of work together to try to figure out where this hummingbird is going to be and they agree that you know when they find the hummingbird the hummingbird gets to choose who's going to get their wish. And so the story is really just about her finding herself, finding her friendships, finding her place in this world where she's kind of felt like an outcast from because of her disability. Um, but she's not. And it's a really, really, really beautiful story. Um, it has a fantastic ending. I loved just like the magic of this story and just how heartfelt it was and how it made me feel. It, anytime you get that feeling. It, it, it was a good it was a very good story. Another 4.75 out of 5 stars and also a book that we just discussed is in um, a whole video Ever Gift a Curse by Caroline O'Donoghue. This is the third book in the All Our Hidden Gifts trilogy. I love this series. This series is beautiful. It's about found family. It's about magic. It's about finding yourself and being who you're meant to be and all of those things. It made me sob. It made me weep. It made me feel things that maybe I didn't want to feel. <laughs> the first book follows our main character, Meeb. Um, she previously had a best friend named Lily who she kind of gave up to be one of the more popular girls. Her and Lily don't get along. Uh, Maeve gets in trouble. She she gets sent to the basement as like a reprimand and while she's there she finds these tarot cards and she's able to give these weirdly accurate tarot readings with these cards which is funny because it's a Catholic school and someone convinces Lily to have someone convinces um, her and Lily to have her read Lily's cards and when she's reading Lily's cards uh, up pops this card that no one has ever heard of called the housekeeper and then soon after Lily goes missing. So Maeve and her new friend Fiona and Lily's brother Ro get together and try to figure out what's going on, who the housekeeper is, and what has happened to Lily. The story is well all of these beautiful things that deals um, with all of the things we just discussed. It also is magical, but it also deals with uh, homophobia, racism, a lot of other things. Um, oh, a lot of other things. It has a lot of deep subjects. It deals with um, religious trauma, a lot of stuff. It's, it's a very heavy set of books, but also a lot of fun and very enjoyable. I had the best time reading this trilogy. It's probably one of my all-time favorites. I will not stop shouting about this series. Speaking of trilogies, trilogies that I loved, and books that I will not stop shouting about, our other 4.75 and final book that we will be discussing today, A Conjuring of Light by B.E. Schwab. Because you know what the Shades of Magic series is about at this point. Like, you're on booktube. You know what it is. You know why we're here. I loved this book. It was so good. Like, this was my favorite of the trilogy by far. I, oh god, I loved it. I had the best time. I cried. Um, the last-ish chapter, the last section, um, that's about saying goodbye. Anosha, a word that doesn't translate to English, um, but means like a fond farewell means the closest thing to a farewell um and just talking about like the story being at it like the end of the book is talking about being at the end of a story and being at the end of something and how beautiful it is to be there and how Schwab wrote this into the story made me weep um but it's like it's an adventure it's magic it's fun it's an adventure um there's great characters I liked each book progressively more than the previous book so I'm really hoping that um, for the next trilogy that I continue to love these. Um, honestly Alucard and Rye, like girl, I live for Alucard and Rye 100%. Like they are the babies, they need to be protected at all costs. I, I cannot. <laughs> Cal and Lila, sure, but like Luke and Rye? girl. Yeah, this was this was so much fun. An absolute great time. Again, I cried. Uh, I've been filming for an hour and a half at this point. 
so I don't know what I'm doing anymore um, but I loved this book so that's that's it so these are some of the books that I read this month um, or DNF'd or what have you uh, because I read a lot of digital books obviously um, but yes these 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 are the books these are them if you made it this far in the video or you're not feeling particularly chatty leave me a crystal ball emoji in the comments section down below if you have read any of these books and you have any thoughts that you'd like to discuss or if you haven't read them and you're interested and you have any questions comments down below that's what we're here for that is all i have for today until next time bye